You are listening to the Reraceables podcast. Are you going to welcome back on the Reraceables podcast? Well, that's it, folks. <laughs> Thirty-two. It's in the books. Oh my god! Let's welcome in Lizzie and Josh from Kansas City. Whoop! Hello. It's Josh's favorite time of the week, folks. For the very last time, season 32, we are crossing out to claim our winner of the second part. First, we must cross off Riley and Madison. You know what? I'm going to let you do this, Nicole. Oh. Oh. You know what? If I was there, I would do it. No, it's Nicole. Okay, but I won. She's crossing off Hung and Chi. Could have hung cheap from the start. Oh, that's true. Our nemesis. Okay. Let I, her have it. Let Nicole, her have I, it. I would give you hung and chi, but I would want to cross off Riley Madison. No, Riley Madison's already crossed off, so let Nicole. Okay, but I'm just saying we're not there, off. so this doesn't really matter. But Lindsay. this is what I would do if we were there. Lindsay, this is just wait, wait, wait. and finally, it took to the end of the race, but Nicole's number eleven squad finally off the board, folks. Give it up for her. Congratulations, Nicole. And so that leaves Tom with three points. I had Will and James third. And I finished third. Well, Josh had them second, so he gets two. Wait, is this the math that's actually going into this? Yeah, Nicole had them at seven. And ladies and gentlemen. We did. If we go back a few episodes, it does say that there are two winners to this season. There is. That's true. The winner of the final three, and there's the winner of the final one. That's what my question was about. Lizzie, you have totally redeemed yourself. Go ahead, tell us. Give you take your moment of uh, five, ten, fifteen seconds of fame here. Um, I think I danced my way uh, through that just a little bit ago. I will take this t- uh, like five seconds to introduce um, my mo- my mother's dog Milo. Mm-hmm. He is about a, a year and a half uh, old. He's black lab husky, um, and he's so excited to be a guest star. Um, I continue on to say thank you so much. I knew this was going to happen from the beginning. Nothing about this leg was a surprise to me. I knew that Will and James were going to just like power right through it, and they did. Uh, and I'm so happy to be. Um, the biggest supporter of that. So may we continue on with our conversation with my success in mind. And I can't wait to see what you guys uh, think about what this episode had in store for us since we weren't able to watch it together. So let's get going. All right. Congratulations, Lizzie. Really nice job. Now, backstory, just to to put a bow on that, Lizzie had, uh, when the Rebraceables really got started, uh, Lizzie had and Josh were binging season six. And Lizzie had predicted that Avi and Joe would be the winners of season six. (laughs) Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. You want to just like knock me down a couple matches? And Josh, why don't you you explain to the viewers what that was all about? Well, we tried doing the power rankings just to do, um, uh, uh, to try to live in the moment of the, um, the, the planning and the envisioning that it takes to uh, do well in one of these seasons. And um, Lizzie, number 11 was, uh, oh, sorry, number one was Avi and Joe. Yeah. The hot dog eating Brooklyn boys. And <laughs> just as the cyclone comes by, they turn and eat the hot dog. Yeah. And, they- <laughs> and, and luckily in the first episode, <laughs> Avi and Joe go home. Lizzie's number one pick. Uh, and so um, throughout that whole power rankings of that season, it was a rough one. It was a rough well, it's one. nice. Good for you, Lizzie, to way to redeem yourself um, to put the number one team. Thank you so much. So Thank speaking you. of the number one team, let's start there. Biggest story of the episode, Will and James win the Amazing Race season 32. I'm happy for them. I think they deserved it. They were the clear winner. No one came close to them. They didn't even bother trying to edit it to make it seem like it was a close race because it wasn't. So good for them. 
Josh? Pros and cons. Pros, they did it all at night. You had no time of day. They could have edited it however they wanted. Con, they edited it poorly and made uh, Will and James. Win. Another con, they also didn't put the memory challenge in the finale. Super upset about that. I thought the penultimate memory challenge was going to be like a build up and make this one super spectacular. And um, whoever came out on top at the beginning of the episode came out on top at the end of the episode. A little bit boring of an episode, if you ask me. What did you just say? Very Hold that thought. We're going to come back to that. But um, Will and James, pre show, again, thought they were going to win. Had been saying it for a couple weeks now. Um, I just felt like they had a little bit of an edge and they just had a little bit of more knowledge, a little bit more savvy. And it seemed like in this race, in this leg in particular, it came down to Will and James getting a cab, which a lot of the finales get come down to, but also maybe more importantly, Will just knowing in New Orleans where to go. Just having a familiarity with the um, with the city, it, it seemed like that was the only real thing aside from then knowing the cake and knowing how the the luck of the cake. The cake was all luck. Here's the thing: I think we have seen seasons of the Amazing Race before, where teams are from the finale um, city. Season and one. So and and so they go into it being like, oh, we're from New York. We know the subway system. We know how to get out to Long Island. We know the Long Island Railroad. We totally know this. And it's definitely to their advantage. Um, we've seen that before. Yes, we have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we saw Will and Tara be from the same city in the end and says, oh, I know where to go around the shortcut and then comes in second place. And it's brilliant. Okay, it is amazing. So, that is good television. Okay, so all I'm saying is that if that's your reasoning why Will and James won is because they were familiar with New Orleans, then you don't really have an argument because that has happened before. No, they're, they won because they got lucky and they knew, they, they got lucky with the, ba the baby. Okay, great. That's sure. it. They got lucky. I, I like think it was those couple steps. It was them getting out and in the cab and like they knew where to go to get to the Bourbon Street and they got there first. And then it was the familiarity of Will with the, the cake or whatever and knowing what to look for. Seemed like he knew a little bit more about that, and maybe that was enough in this leg. No, I don't think it matters if you it's a know thumbs about thumbs down it or in not. my book. I don't think it matters. I think it. There are so many challenges like that. There are so many roadblocks where it's like, look through a haystack to find a needle. That's exactly what this was. There have been several challenges like that throughout the thirty-two seasons of The Amazing Race, mm -hmm. where that is a challenge. And it takes some teams 10 minutes and it takes other teams three hours. I think that that is pure amazing race. I think that is the challenge. And, and that's just what it is. And sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you're not. Luck plays a factor. If we rewind to last week's episode, there is luck, right? You get a good taxi driver. There is luck. However, you always need to counteract it with an equalizer. You can never rely on winning only through luck. And that's why we talked about it last week. It was good because the, the lucky part of the challenge was in the beginning of the episode. And then you can actually earn your way to the front. What was the lucky part? The baby cake challenge? No, yeah, it was all luck. Right. No, uh, in the last episode or this episode? In this, well, in the last episode was the taxi driver. The finale episode. Okay. But in this episode, there, everything was a matter of doing. Right, like there wasn't much of a challenge. No. Right? Jump off the bridge, it's not a challenge, it's just who gets there first. Right. Repel down, nothing. And so, and so that's what I mean, when you, when the whole episode is derived off one luck challenge, it's not exciting. Yeah. It's not, it was, there was no chance to have two teams running for the final part. There just wasn't, it, it, it fell flat for, in my book. That's, I, I agree with that, there, it did lack the excitement and equalize and we kept saying that throughout the whole episode I, yeah we were like there's gonna be an equalizer there's gonna be an equalizer yeah we did we really did and i was kind of hoping for that because yeah. you know 10 minutes into the episode you, you knew, knew who won. you knew who won yeah. but if there had been an equalizer you would have been like oh game changer it would have been like so exciting yep. but that's not how it was this time around
And I think also one thing that Nicole and I noticed was how it went. It, it went right from the Philippines to New Orleans. And so the airport and flights played no role in it. There was no stopover in a Hawaii and an extra couple challenges there. Well, was, there was nothing. It was just straight to New Orleans. And then it was like you guys said, a couple challenges, no big deal and done. And you knew who was going to win in the first few minutes. It also didn't have that finale feel to it other than, you know, that running up to the final spot, but it didn't have a final finale feel because there wasn't a comprehensive challenge yep. because they put it in the previous episode. Yep, they blew that one. I don't know why they did that. I Was guess to just mix it up and be different for a season. That's the only reasoning I have. And, and it, I think that's why it happened, and I, I I agree. I don't think it was the most exciting television, and I think had a challenge like that been in this episode, oh yeah, it, it would have been so great, and it it, it would have put the alliance to the test. Yep. If, if, because if you have those final three teams who are so committed to an alliance, but it's for the it's for the finals, it's for the it's for the million dollars. They wouldn't have acted like they did in the last episode where they were just trying to edge out Gary and D'Angelo. It would have been all, it would have been every man for himself. So I, I think that it was misplaced having that flag challenge in the penultimate episode. I have a half a theory or an inkling of a feeling. The inkling well, of the feeling is that this show is too big. The show is too big to do anything in any major city that's exciting without being spotted. And so what they needed to do was end the season at 4 a.m. in the morning. They needed to do it in the complete darkness. They needed to do it where there were almost no taxi drivers out. They needed to do it in enclosed areas, right? We were always inside. To be fair, the Mardi Gras, they got on a float, didn't move anywhere, and just Ow. looked up at the corner building where people threw beads on them. Like, it wasn't actually that impressive because they weren't in public everything was privatized and what when you deal with that i guess you probably have to think about timing right like yeah and that's part of where i think that this finale ended flat in that 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 having to hide it so much it actually hurt the planning of the episode was this the worst episode of the season no i don't think so i mean i cried Okay. <laughs> Nicole, when did you cry? At the proposal. Yeah, of course. Wow. So did I. Oh, is that what you were doing? Yeah. When he was like talking about how many times that he applied to be on yeah. the show with all different partners, that. but it took this particular partner really good. to make it happen. Oh man. Drama. Got me. Yeah. Bachelor! Yes! <laughs> it was the most Bachelor-esque part of the episode. That's why I yeah. loved it. I did like the the tie back to the, the first ball rolling down the street and having to roll this ball yeah. down the street. Um, however, this was like the chance to, to do like, um, I keep thinking about that San Francisco oh. episode when they just had to like, literally run through the streets and how cool that was yeah. and i was kind of expecting that with new orleans like bumping into trash cans and like ro rolling it down it didn't seem like it was that it seemed like it was like rolling around the corner of the mardi, mardi gras world yeah and i liked you know, our beginning and end symmetry of not only the ball rolling with the oil drum but also the kind of the feel of trinidad and tobago when Carnival. we first started and New Orleans. I thought that was really cool. It, it seemed like they tried to play up that kind of fun piece of it, uh, go to a fun place, an energy place. But I think you're right, Josh. I think it was kind of lackluster and it really stems from they're on the floats and they're just having beads thrown at them. They're not even working for it. It's not even, yeah. it's just like a matter of time before they get enough of the big ones. I, I said to Nicole, I was like, are there, who's up there throwing them? Are there producers that are just 
throwing the big one every sixth bead? Like, how do you account yeah. for that too? There's no way to know. Or do you just say to like a group of people or a community that already exists in New Orleans and say, hey, we need you for, you know, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. and just throw whatever you have and then luck will be luck. You know, it's like, it's hard, it's hard to tell kind of how, how fair that was. The engagement. Do we really think that Will was carrying around the ring the entire race? I yeah. You yeah. think? Yeah, I do. Even, even my mom, my mom and Daryl weighed on on that. They never saw this. Because they, they, they chimed in for the show. last like 15 minutes of this episode. <laughs> And then they caught the proposal and they were like, there's no way they ha must have given it to producers. They must have mailed it somewhere. They must no. have like done whatever. And he was carrying it the whole time. But I think the safest way to ensure that your wedding ring gets where it needs to go is if it stays on your person. Mm -hmm. So I think that they, that he probably had it the whole time. You know, I was more thinking about how do you tell your friends and family that you got engaged? You know, everyone's going to be like, oh, how'd you do it? You can't be like, well, we were on the amazing race because technically you can't talk about it for two years. I don't actually know what happens. I can't wait for you to find out, Dwyer, when you. So tune in them. next week, folks, when Temple Council <laughs> Vlog <laughs> interviews Will and James, the winners of sort of us, uh, the amazing race. I do think that Phil knew, though, because he, oh, yeah, like, he did it. turned oh. it to Will. Yep. was it and said like do you have anything you'd like to say to james and america yep. or whatever he said but i feel like that was his like setup not only the engagement but again james's speech of being a fan since he's 11 years old and winning the amazing race winning it with his partner for life i mean that's good stuff good for them let's go to second place hung and chi Underestimated by us more than any of the other final three teams. I'm glad that she struggled to find the baby. <laughs> that was embarrassing for him. Brutal. I predicted that Hung would struggle with the heights because of the sauerkraut situation, embarrassment. She did not. They're just was it? Was it an embarrassment if she actually got it? No. No, she's just bitter. Um, I, w I was really hoping she'd miss. But Josh, I was thinking of you when, um, because I noticed in her little commentary of whatever, which was actually filmed after, she said, if I had missed... The, the clue envelope or whatever i would have blah 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 and i said to tom well now we know she gets it first try yep yep did you notice yep. that too yes i did <laughs> yes i did good for Thank the both you. of you wow you're so good yes now when you rewatch seasons when we go back with the re-raceables podcast you'll see all of the editing flaws that tell the story before the story is told Flaws. All right. So she ultimately did struggle in the finding the baby. Cake, the king cakes. The king cakes. But ultimately they do come in second. Good for them. Really uh, outdid all of our expectations. We had them eighth, fifth, sixth, and 11th. Totally underestimated them, but they proved us wrong. Really strong team, really smart, capable, worked well together. I think they really showed that a husband and wife who have a really good relationship can be very, very successful in the race. We've seen other teams that are husband and wife or dating or formerly dating. You mentioned Tara and Will before, and it just is so combative and it's so not effective, but I feel like their strengths as a couple really propelled them to a second place finish. And that's something that they should be proud of. And I think their kids will be as well. I think so too. And I think the fact that they entered the race saying communication is a strength of ours. Mm -hmm. um, Level-headedness is a strength of ours. 
um, is an important factor because um, being level-headed and being, wow, what is, what did I just say? Being level-headed and, um, and being, I don't know, more of a brainy team really kind of puts you in the front because at the end of the game, I think the amazing race is a mental game. And it's like, yeah, a brawn challenge can get you through a roadblock, but it's not going to win you the entire race. And I think that's kind of what we saw here. And, and Hung and Chi were an amazing representation of middle-aged America, mom and dads who are trying to do this and prove something to their kids. And I think Hung and Chi absolutely achieved that. I think that they came through and they showed their kids that you can travel around the world and do insane, crazy things with your partner. And I think they achieved what they were trying to achieve. Um, but I will say that I don't think their goal from the beginning was to win the amazing race. I think their goal from the beginning was to be an amazing parent example for their mm -hmm. kids. I think there are, have been a lot of teams in, in a bunch Josh, of- Josh, you're shaking your head. Why? Well, I, let me finish my thought. Let me finish my thought. I think there have been a lot of teams that are like, I just want to reconnect with my dad. I really want to just like connect with my mom. And it's like, yep. okay, well, you can connect with your mom, but you only have to do three legs of the amazing race to do that. Right. You only have to travel through three com countries to do that. You don't have to win the amazing race to regain a relationship. If you want to win the amazing race, you have to be- a natural winner. You have to be driven. You have to be a super fan. You have to be level-headed. What what have you? And so I think that's why Hung and Chi didn't win is because they don't have all of those qualities. Josh I is completely shaking his head. Disagree. And, and I will let him speak in a moment. But I just wanted to say that that that's my two cents. As I said, this episode came down to luck. However, I have. Hung and Chi wanted to win. If they didn't want to win, why would they pack one backpack and share a toothbrush the entire race? Why would they not pack deodorant? Like they wanted to win. They had, they, yes, they did care about making a good appearance for their kids, but they wanted to win. I think that they didn't pack because they obviously weren't going to be no. incompetent racers. No. They were going to you do. You can't say that they didn't want to win and they just cared about looking good on television. No, they didn't. That's care what about you said. No, they didn't care about looking good on television. To they their didn't. kids. Yes. They cared about character. They didn't care about surface appearance. Surface appearance is smelling good for other racers. Appearance is ease of shaving by having the handle yeah, so and they did all of those razor. things because they wanted to win and they were trying to win and they were focusing on winning every they team. did every single thing throughout the race to win every Definitely. team comes into this to win not every team come some teams come into this saying i want to reconnect with my husband i want to i want to go on a honeymoon i want to do whatever it's like you can do all of that and win the amazing race or you can do all of this and not win the amazing race and then still have the same experience that you would have had, but without the million dollars and, and you'll. Yeah. And without the luck of finding a baby, without the luck of knowing or where to go, yeah, they whatever. would have won. So I don't think you could say that they were a bad team or that they were an incompetent team because they came right behind Will and James. Yeah, like I don't think they are they... a strong team and they could have won. And then you wouldn't be saying any of this stuff. I don't think that they were incompetent. Let's move on. Let's go to the third place team. Kind of a shocker here, I would say. I'd be willing to bet that we feel a little bit shocked. Riley and Madison, the pro volleyball players, the beach bros, coming into the final leg, three straight first places. I bet they, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm sure they had another one or two first places. They were at the top of the pack, the entire race from beginning to end, and they find themselves in third place. What happened? There was no brains and no bronze challenges in the final episode. I think that was a big thing for me, at least. Um, like they, I think that they're very smart and they're the most athletic team there. And when you look at that, there was no really real athleticism that needed to happen in this last leg. There was a athleticism that needed to get you here, but not in this last leg. There wasn't even brains that really needed to get you there. 
because what really was it? You know, it was like, again, it was getting in the taxi. It was finding the, the, the king cake. It was getting to the Mardi Gras beads, which also feel, felt like just luck. It was jumping off a bridge, which is easy. And it was putting a world together, which I guess could come down to it. But like, that's not the, the brains that you needed to get to the final three. And so it's like, yeah, the, out of the final three teams, p- pick the most mediocre one. And you pick the most mediocre one. Congratulations, Will and James. Like This leg just kind of came down to a taxi ride in the beginning, not even in the end. It came down to knowing where Bourbon Street was and getting X amount of time ahead in that. Reading the clue, as always, and that was about it. There was no ability to really keep it that close. Again, no airport, no travel, no thought challenge, no cumulative challenge. Exactly. It was just kind of very straight, very linear. There was no opportunity for strong strategy to play a role. Yeah. And I believe that that was outweighed because they wanted to hide it from the public. It's a good theory. But yeah, ultimately, I mean, the most athletic team was Riley and Madison. The smartest team was Hung and Chi. The other team was Will and James. Well, no, they were the most, they were the savviest game players. They were the savviest game players, sure. I agree. And, and I'll agree with that. But I also think that that shows that, like, they're, that, that to win the last leg, you didn't have to be smart. You didn't have to be athletic. Well, I, I would assume that there you had to be lucky. There was no opportunity. Congratulations. There was no opportunity to be strategic. It was just like point A, point B, point C, point D. And if you were lucky, you would get a cab from point B to point C. Yep. There was no like you have to think better than another team to do this one thing. It was just like you just have to do it fastest. And and none of it was really that hard. And yeah. so it was actually incredible to watch because we have seen some finales be like, oh my God, how could you even do this? It takes so much brawn. It takes so much brain. It takes so much strategic thinking in order to even get to the halfway point of the final leg. And I felt like this leg was so simple. It could have been leg five. It could have been leg four. Um, I think they really put the final leg essence of it into the penultimate um, episode, the one where Gary and D'Angelo were eliminated. And I don't know if that was strategic on the producer's part. I don't know if they saw that they had four teams left and they were like, okay, let's figure out how we want to configure the last couple episodes. This is how we're going to do it. I, I would love to know what the thinking was behind that. Um, but yeah, this final episode, I was like, oh, boom, boom, roadblock, roadblock, done, 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 finish line, team, 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 them, there you go, that was it. It was so easy. It kind of reminds me of, you know, you're wearing a Chiefs shirt, like somebody's going to play the Chiefs in the playoffs, and not the Super Bowl, but the real Super Bowl is if you can, when you play the Chiefs, can you beat them? And if you beat them in the conference championship game, that's really the Super Bowl. Same thing with like the 1980 U.S. hockey team, right? We beat Russia. It was, it wasn't even the gold medal game. It was the semifinal game, but it was really like the gold medal game. And that's what the the penultimate leg was. It was the, it was the, it was the gold medal game. It was the, it was the high point of it. The most drama should have and could have converged there on that final challenge, that, that cumulative challenge with the music but it kind of got taken because of the, the alliance. So it fell a little flat and then we went right into, oh, well, and also because they did the new city sprint, I think they put a lot of time and energy into that leg a little bit more so than, again, the final leg just came down to fly to New Orleans, not even fly to oh, you know, Maui, Hawaii, and go through Maui and do a roadblock, do a detour, fly then to California and end there somewhere or fly then to New Orleans from Hawaii or something and make it another cumulative challenge or something. It just wasn't that. 
it just wasn't that. And I feel bad for, I feel bad for the viewers. I mean, as much as we enjoy Will and James and the engagement and that whole thing. And that moment was great. I don't know. I wanted more. I wanted to see Riley and Madison have a chance to kind of make up and use their skills. Yeah, to come. They didn't even have a chance. Let's go to the challenges. First one was a root info. It was the bourbon street, 50 red, 50 gold necklaces. Do only the big beads. You had to look at the grand marshal that was sitting in the float. You kind of had to replicate. Hello dog. You had to kind of replicate his beads that he was wearing Good challenge, bad challenge, really bad challenge. I think a really bad challenge. I agree. It was another luck. It was just like, well, I'm going to look at, and, and you know what I really wanted? I wanted to see the like Riley and Madison pull up their shirt. I thought that was hilarious. But when, when the camera looked up, I wanted 10 beats to come. You know, like I wanted there to be like ways to, to beat it. I wanted there to just be more strategy or more brawn or like something it just felt like it felt like the people on the balcony set a timer and said we're gonna throw these off over the course of the next 30 minutes and everybody has to be here for 30 minutes because the teams that left first ended first and there was no there was no nothing to it yeah right. but then again josh how much more could they really do because if you do it during the day or during well, the that's what dictated the whole episode, which is what ruined the episode. Right, because if you do it during an actual night in New Orleans on Bourbon Street, it's going to be a train wreck. There's going to be tons of people, yeah. people drinking all over the place, too. And who knows what could happen, that liability, that whatever. So they tried to control for it. And you just had to basically go into the float that was already there. And it seemed like it was very mechanical, like like you said, 30 minutes, whatever the time frame was, eventually all 50 of those necklaces were going to be thrown and they had to find them and put them on. Yeah. I get it. I get why they did it, right? It's cool that, to go to New Orleans, to see the kind of party atmosphere, the people dancing in the street and that whole feel-good nature that is Bourbon Street, but it still seemed like it was – it was kind of in a vacuum. It was kind of limited and it was kind of restricted. I, I kind of wanted to, and I don't know much about New Orleans, but I kind of wanted to see like the underground side of New Orleans, the things that you don't know. It's like, yeah, we were all like, yeah, when you go to New Orleans, you, you drive over that bridge or yeah, you go to New Orleans and you know about throwing the beads, you know about the cake, but like, what is the side that we don't know? That's why we watch this show to like learn about a culture that we, we don't have a good understanding of. I do want more about New Orleans. It seemed like it was just kind of constrained to, to a limitedness. And maybe that's just the nature of it, just the timing of it, flights, timing, try to limit distractions, liability, who knows, but. I, I think mean, that kind of fell flat. I think what fell flat also was that that globe thing, right? Like that could have been, you have to, I, I mean, something more, you know what I thought was exciting? The the amusement parks, the, the carnival, remember the carnival challenge in that big warehouse? Like something like that, where you have to like run to one side of the warehouse and find this part of the race and do this and run over there and do that part of the race and like, you, I mean, even if even if you are constricted by the idea that you need to stay inside in the dark, there are ways to be yeah. super super it's excited. Done in the float warehouse. Yeah, exactly. Maybe like yeah. a scavenger hunt to find the pieces. Exactly. Exactly. Like I agree. So, so I think that there were ways to make it no. better. Um, how about the let's go to the roadblock you find the baby in the pastry at cafe beignet oh my God, Lizzie. who do you think would have done that for you guys the baby would be me the baby yeah yeah josh would have found the baby in the cake well because going into it i wasn't quite Detail. sure i wasn't quite sure if you had to eat the cake <laughs> so that would have been a risk i would have been willing to take sorry um, it Josh is better at eating stuff 
than I am. Um, and, and, <laughs> and especially seeing the second roadblock where someone had to like bungee jump, grab the clue, whatever. I would have been perfectly fine doing that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. We both would have been good at it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have been better at the first one and by default, yeah. Okay. How about the us? What do you think? I think I would have done the cakes. Wow. And you would have done the bungee. I think another, if we, again, in that moment, could we recognize what the task was asking us to do? Because I think the, the finding the baby was really attention to detail, like Josh said, but also patience. Mm -hmm. And talking to Gary, uh, shout out to Gary, talking to Gary, the one thing he said that he would redo if he raced again was that you don't need to rush. You don't need to do it. Everybody thinks you have to do it. Everybody thinks you have to run and rush everywhere and in everything, but you don't. And I think that the cake baby finding is another great example of that. There's look like 50 cakes to look through and those things were freaking big, man. Those were, uh, that was a lot of stuff to look through to find this little tiny nothing. And well, that requires patience and a methodical approach and, and really attention to detail. And I think I would have struggled a little bit more in that than you would have. Can we talk about the beignets? Yes. Eating the beignets. Little follow up challenge. And Will and James's <laughs> performance. Oh, yeah, this was great. Come on. Come on, it was so great. It's not cow intestines. Right. It's not anything disgusting. It's beignets. Okay. Right, it's fried dough with powdered they sugar. They got so lucky that exactly. that was their. Exactly. Yeah. Right, how easily that could have been like eat five dozen oysters because seafood is gigantic in New Orleans. Crawfish, yeah. Or yeah, any of that stuff. And they got to eat, well, beignets is really a big thing. Or like something spicy, Cajun, sure. Asian style. Right. Can you imagine? I am sure Michelle and Victoria were like losing oh, their minds. Yeah. That's they probably, to think about. They probably went home that night. Like, I guess we just go home. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they all if they all had to go back, like you know, to the Saints Stadium, they were like, "God damn it!" <laughs> I know. This is where we're going back to. It's so funny. They also didn't talk about the historicness of that building. Like, I think of Hurricane Katrina, mm. and that building was was a, like a sanctuary it was a ground that housed people that yeah. people lived. I didn't even make mention of that yeah well you it's can years. go into the detail of uh, all of the history of everywhere you go but yeah but like that's what i feel like we're like yearning for those tidbits sure. you know like we don't need to know about the entire oh. candy making factory but it's cool to know but I do yearn for for those nuggets of interesting things from, from each place. But Josh, doesn't that go back? I feel like you said this after the first episode that we want to have fun, right? We want to go to a fun place. We want to feel good. We want to feel involved around people, especially COVID. Snow has happening here in New York. Like I felt like New Orleans was the perfect end city. And as much as we're hating on it, because we want it to be so great. We want it to be season two, sprint to the finish. But it was that happy-go-lucky season. And that, in very many ways, was kind of this season, wasn't it? Everybody got along. Everybody was hunky-dory for the most part. Even in the end, when Gary and D'Angelo get, you know, uh, Gary and D'Angelo get – pushed out at the end there. Well, Other than that, everybody was kind of aligned, uh, except for maybe a U-turn, but even still, those were kind of friendly game moves instead of deceiving. She even said, like, I was happy to be U-turned by- Yeah, Leo said that uh, right after. True, true. So, but, but okay, right here, here's, I guess, where my problem is then. Then push it even more. Push it even more. Make the final part where you have to like go in a gerbil wheel and roll down to get to the finish line. You pop out at the finish line and then confetti shoots everywhere. Like if you want it to be fun, make it fun. Go to a trampoline park and have to catch 10 things in the air. Like 
Like, you know, or, or hey, Mardi Gras, car- Carnival, masks, like make masks and you have to do something or you have to be a puppet and carry it down the, you know, like those are ways to be fun. If you're going to be fun, be fun. If you're not, then at least be interesting. <laughs> don't don't go to a weird Mardi Gras warehouse where then the owner is going to look to see if you put paper on a globe in the right way. You know, like, come on. How about even like, you end in the Superdome. You end on a football field. Have a challenge right at the 50 yard line with the finish line right there. Have yeah. the punter punt from the upper deck, punt a couple balls and you got to catch two of them or something like that. Each I- partner has got to catch one and then you can go on and get the, to the finish line or something. I think that that's, that ups the stakes. <coughs> and it's all indoors, right? Like if you're so concerned about not being seen, Make the entire mega leg in the stadium. Yeah. I also didn't like, and this is just me being a football guy. Number one, why did you put the fu- the finish platform at the 35 yard line? I didn't even notice. I'll be honest. Well, why is it at the 35? Do you want to see the Saints logo? Is that why it's not at the 50? Well, that's where you kick off. That's Hello. why. No, but it the end zone. Come on, it should have been the end zone. I agree. Non football person orchestrated. And may I say this also? Shout out to Gary and D'Angelo. Also, they've been there. They've been they've been at that fifty yard line. They have crushed the Saints on that field. D'Angelo has run for touchdowns in that building. Gary, has, they've felt success there already. I mean, this is that would have been such a beautiful ending for them, but. On the other hand, they've been there. They've done that. They... Let's go to clue number seven, where they had to find the crate inside the Mardi Gras warehouse. They have to find these, these crates. They had 32 puzzle pieces in there to take the, what was it, like a Velcro around this gigantic globe. Yeah. Worthy of a final challenge? Not oh, worthy. Oh, oh. This wasn't a good final challenge. Have you watched um, any other season of The Amazing Race? If so, you know that there are like three times as many things that should go into the final leg. Yeah. Milo agrees. It was not comprehensive. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement. Although, cool puzzle. Really like the idea of it. I mean, that's great, but at the same time, that's like elementary shit that would be on the amazing. Ground. And like, yes, what and no. Said, yes and no. Yeah. Hold on. Yes and no, because again, another advantage, and maybe if there was the two teams at the same challenge in that moment at the same time, but again, you have you have Will and James, the super fans, do the legwork that I know. Teams that got recruited like Kelly and Levante. Aiken and Cody. Right. Those different teams that got recruited or didn't have a familiarity with the show wouldn't have necessarily known to study geography. Right. And James said that. They studied geography and whatever capacity that was, I think Will pointed out Saudi Arabia. Maybe he's a world traveler and that's why he was able to do it. But how many people on the race out of the 11 teams would have known Saudi Arabia by sight on a strip of right. one of 32 right. strips? Hung and she and Riley and Madison easily would have gotten it. You know, like, I don't think that the that globe? was, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. It didn't seem difficult. It didn't seem difficult. And that's where it was like, that's going to be the final challenge. Like, that's going to be your final challenge. I guess that just about does it for us here on the re podcast for season 32. It has been simply amazing. I just wanna say thank you to my friends, Josh and Lizzie for all their time and dedication to helping make the podcast possible. I appreciate it very much. I love you guys for that. I wanna thank my wife, Nicole. I appreciate you being part of this and helping make this a wonderful experience. And I hope that you guys had as good a time as I did. It was great to get together and share this experience at a deeper level and, and really get into the weeds of it 
and do the rankings and have these podcasts and all these conversations and all the, the good stuff that went in. Uh, I never thought that this would become what it has become a little ritual that we have here, as well as talking to these great teams. I just want to say thank you to all, all the teams, Nathan and Cody, uh, Kelly and Levon, Jerry and Frank, Leo and Alana, Michelle and Victoria. Who am I missing? Ishwar and Aparna, Kayla and Haley, Gary, D'Angelo. We'll get you on the next one. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to talk to the three finalists before we call this a season. But, you know, it's really been an amazing experience. And I think that that's what the whole race is about. And I think that this has brought a whole new experience to what TV watching and blogging and all that can be. And especially uh, through Zoom and through all these different platforms here. And it's really been an amazing journey for us here at the Reraceables. And we thank everybody for watching and for listening and being part of it. So we look forward to the next season and what's in store for that going forward. We'll be back soon. Um, but for Josh, for Lizzie, for Nicole, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.